Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fisher Random World Championship. We have a real treat in front of us. This is uh, like something out of uh, out of uh, the, the Paul Morphy era. Uh, beautiful attacking chess being played here. Only one mistake by one of the players and then uh, everything just falls apart. Uh, truly uh, amazing chess. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. The position again, a very weird one. One of the players even uh, said that uh, uh, the third day in a row, the positions they are getting are absolutely disgusting. I mean, they, of course, they want to play Fisher Random random but this is I mean what is this uh, so let's dive straight into it. Uh, it's Yanni Pomnici versus Noderbeck Abdusatorov. Uh, and um, uh, for the moment, they've already played two games. Noderbeck won both of them. And now it's time uh, for Jan to strike back. He has the white pieces. Let's see what happened in this one. Uh, Nepo opens with pawn to g4, which makes sense. You open up your queen and also the bishops are placed on e1 and f1. You want to make them uh, work as well. So pawn to e5, uh, controlling the center, works in any chess variant. We have knight to b3 and now pawn to g six also opening up the queen a little bit uh we have pawn to d4 and now knight to b6 we have uh pawn to h4 advancing the the king side pawns and now pawn to d5 and uh, back grabs the full uh, center d captures on e5 queen captures on e5 and now uh, okay the knight is uh, actually on a square where the knight should be so knight to f3 attacking the black queen so queen to e7 we have e3 opening up the light square bishop and bishop to g7 now we have pawn to g5 grabbing a lot of space here so Noderbeck will have to figure out how to develop the knight to most likely move the queen and then shift the knight to e7 uh, pawn to f5 you do not want a backwards pawn uh, stuck here if you know uh, everything just gets traded off the board so uh, either Nepo will trade out a song or, or you will have a beautiful pawn on f5 queen h2 and now we have bishop to f7 we have pawn to a3 taking away the b4 square from the black queen but also preparing bishop b4 in some lines which could be important uh, we have queen to e8 now freeing up the e7 square for the uh, knight and now comes knight b to d4 just improving the position of the knight also h5 was a very nice idea uh, we have knight to c4 now putting a lot of pressure on that uh, b2 pawn and now bishop to c3 with some nasty ideas of maybe uh, even even going some like knight to c6 in the future could be uh, could be interesting opening up an attack towards uh, the the bishop here as the bishop is unguarded or, or many uh, weird discoveries. So here bishop back to f8 by Noderbeck and now bishop captures on c4. The bishop here for the moment isn't doing all that much and the knight is a monster so we need to remove it. Bishop captures pawn captures and now uh, uh, queen to e5. Jan centralizes the queen offers a queen trade and if uh, Noderbeck would trade here this would be a great position for Jan. The knights beautifully centralized, the bishop very strong, the pawns already advanced on the king side. So uh, obviously Noderbeck will not do that. He will keep the queens on the board, knight to e7, and now you should uh, continue developing something like rook to d2. You castle queen, uh, queen side, you play rook to d1, double up on the d file, something uh, in that fashion. But here Jan played bishop to b4 and uh, this seems like a, a reasonable move as you are you know controlling this diagonal you want to trade down further uh, but uh, it actually completely blunders the game but you have to see why. So feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what Jan missed here while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that c5 wins a piece here. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, no, it's not c5 right away. It's uh, actually rook to d5 first. You attack the queen, you win the c5 square, and now you prepare c5 because white has to waste time dealing with the attacked queen. And there's no actual uh, good square for the queen. If you go queen f6, just knight g8 attacks the queen again. And if you put the queen on h8, then the queen is on h8. And still you get c5 in and you just win material end of the game. So uh, what happened in the game was after rook d5, Jan played queen to f4, and now after c5, attacking the bishop and knight, Jan played pawn to e4. He attacks the rook on d5, and okay, uh, if, if the rook moves, then the c5 pawn will fall. So here just f captures on e4, and now knight to e5, going after the bishop on f7, c captures on d4, Noderbeck grabs the knight and creates this massive pawn chain in the center, knight captures on f7, Nepo figures out how to uh, save his piece, and now comes knight to f5, uh, blocking the queen's defense of the knight, and also just uh, enjoying a much better position. So what can uh, Nepo do here? He plays bishop captures on 
on f8. And now we have queen captures on f7. Queen captures on f8 is also very strong. For example, if queen captures on f8, the knight's still hanging. Uh, and after knight h6, you can just castle queenside. And I mean, look at this position. Uh, this does not have to be analyzed. So, okay, after bishop captures on f8, Nodribek uh, decided to go uh, queen captures on f7 instead. Now the bishop is still hanging. And uh, how do you play this? Well, uh, first, a nice little in between move by Nepo queen captures on e4 saying that okay if you capture the bishop now I'm gonna capture your rook but now comes queenside castles and the rooks are defending each other with the bishop still hanging so bishop back to b4 or you play something else but then you give up uh, a piece so you have to play bishop to b4 and now rook to e8 now attacking the queen claiming the only open uh, file on the board that is the e file for the black rook queen to f4 and now pawn to a5 just going after the bishop uh, bishop to d2 and now rook d to e5 completely owning that e file and it's uh, very hard for uh, for Jan to develop here you still have to move the rook you still have to castle queenside but uh, I mean in, in what order do you do those moves he tries h5 uh, it, it's a move uh, I mean he has to play something and now just pawn to c3 attacking the bishop weakening the b2 pawn weakening the a3 pawn so b captures on c3 and now uh, interestingly there is only one winning move for Abdus Satarov here and you have to be very careful not to miss it so feel free to pause the video once again and uh, find the winning idea for non direct uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not uh, recapturing or doing something weird or even rook to e4 if you guys were considering that. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to a2. That's the good stuff. Now you're just going to capture on a3, deliver check, and there is no way out of this. Uh, whatever you play, uh, it's pretty much the same. So here, c captures on d4 by on. Queen captures on a3 with check, rook to b2, and now uh, a nice repetition of moves because this is move 28 and they gain a additional time at move 30 uh, so you need to reach uh, that time control so queen to a1 check uh, rook to b1 queen to a3 check rook to b2 these are the only moves for nepo so he doesn't really have a choice and only now rook to b5 uh playing this on move 30 so now time control has been reached and now you also have increment so you don't have to worry about messing up the position because you're low on time and here uh, how are you defending the the rook uh, you can't you, you should just resign but uh, nepo is always finds a way he plays bishop to c3 and it seems like he's just you know given up he's giving up a bishop but if you grab the bishop then your rook hangs on b5 so you should uh, be careful not to do stuff like that so after bishop to c3 Noderberg just played rook to e2 and he was in this position on move 31 that Yanni Ponishi resigned the game and yet another victory for Noderberg Abdusatorov uh, who just uh, is destroyed everyone he uh, this is his third victory in a row against Jan so he has 3-0 against Jan he has 2-0 against Wesley so uh, and uh, I think um, yeah I'm pretty sure uh, he, he only has one draw or no it's a uh, it's a draw uh, against Wesley yeah that it was that 100 move game against Wesley uh, that uh, or uh, I should just check I don't want to trick you guys or anything uh, but yeah, as we did cover it. So yeah, it's only one draw against Wesley and then uh, four wins against Gretarsson and now the third win in a row against Yanni Pomnici. So I mean, incredible stuff. Yeah, I know he he's a reigning World Rapid Champion, but uh, this is Fisher Random. I mean, he's so strong, it's uh, it's uh, unfathomable. I mean, su such, a, such a strong player. And uh, here you resign because now uh, if you move the bishop, then just queen captures. And B2 is checkmate. If you don't move the bishop, then captures queen captures on c2 uh, not on c2 but like literally anything captures captures so if you uh, if you try to defend the bishop then even queen a1 check rook to b1 and queen captures or rook captures is checkmate so absolutely everything is checkmate here uh, so yeah, a brilliant game by Abdus Satarov. Uh, Jan made that one uh, one uh, slight uh, inaccuracy, or basically a, 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 a you know just a game losing blunder. Bishop to b4, he missed rook d5 and c5, and that was enough to take down. Uh, former uh, World Chess Championship candidate uh, and uh, also uh, th th this year's World Chess Championship candidate, uh, Yanni Pomnishi. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Really a wild one. Hope we see many more uh, games like this one. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Sjorn and uh, I would like to thank uh, Jeff Morrow, uh, Johan Achlef, Nathan H uh, Halsey and Jack Obeid for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continue the coverage of this fine event uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.